Hello and welcome. This is Vanessa Crowlish, and today we're going to talk about the math behind cryptocurrency. Let's do some math. Now, I went ahead and I started Googling and YouTube and, you know, doing a lot of research about cryptocurrency. And I want to share with you today, you know, I look through everything. And if you feel overwhelmed researching these things, believe me, I can see why. Because I was like, oh my God, there's so many videos. Which one, sh which one should I pick? Should I put 20 minutes on this one? Should I put, like, my opportunity cost was constantly be debated. <laughs> but, uh, you know, looking at cryptocurrency. So I decided just to, you know, find the white paper that the Bitcoin founder um, made, which um, he actually published this in 2008, Satoshi Nakamoto. And the paper is called, it's a white paper. And a white paper basically is when you are like an authority or someone that, you know, does, knows very well what you're doing. And then you are like, I have this proposal. So a white paper basically, you know, has to be very clear, has to be efficient, effective, and today I want to share with you the white paper that, and I'm going to say his name again, I always forget the first name, Satoshi Nakamoto wrote about Bitcoin. Why? Because I felt that all the information that, you know, I was really trying to find like something simple and there was so much that I said, why not go into the original white paper? So let's go ahead and read it. I think that um, it's actually only nine pages. You will think that Bitcoin will have, you know, this huge white paper. But I'm going to tell you, the white paper is called Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. I'm going to show you. We're going to read it. We're going to analyze it. And basically, this is, what, this is what this episode is about, the white paper of Bitcoin. This is the beginning. From here, we can actually understand a little bit more about it and then, uh, you know, uh, do other podcasts and then start doing financial analysis to see exactly where the value starts going up, starts going down. And it's just going to be a lot of fun. So, but first let's start talking about Bitcoin because this is basically what started everything. The first thing I want to, I want to tell you is that the word crypto, um, which it sounds from like, you know, <laughs> from like the death to put it away, it's actually a, a Greek word that means hidden basically like a secret. So this is the reason why we call it cryptocurrency. So that's step number one. Let me go ahead and share the screen. And this is the white paper written by Satoshi Nakamoto, August uh, 2008, he published this paper. Look how beautiful, he even has an email address. I don't even know if that works anymore. But let's first read the abstract. When you have a white paper or, or a research paper, the abstract basically, takes everything in consideration and it, it, it just gives you like an overview of what the white paper is going to be. So let's read it. So the abstract says, a purely peer-to-peer -peer version of electronic cash will allow online payments to be sent directly from one party to another without going through a financial institution. So this is how he says the paper. This is basically the hook saying like, look, what about if we can go ahead and just exchange, uh, um, you know, a medium of money or like, you know, something that we both consider value. But instead of using a bank, maybe we have a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. So let's continue. So then he says, digital signatures provided part of the solution, you know, like when you were doing like the online transactions. And then but he says, but the main benefits are lost if a trusted third party is it still required to prevent double spending? Now, double spending means that, uh, for example, when you have a dollar, dollars, obviously, they are counterfeited, right? Like, you know, people make uh, fake dollars. So double spending means that you have, like, one cryptocurrency or, like, one Bitcoin, and then you try to give it to A, and you try to give the same value to B. So that's basically what double spending is. Try not to cheat the system to get one coin into two people when you only have enough you're basically trying to pay two coins when you only have one coin available to put it away. So that's what he means about double spending. Um, now, how do they do this? So then we go. The network time stamps transactions by hashing them into an ongoing change of hash-based proof of work. 
Now I have to Google to figure out what was hash and was, uh, you know, proof of work and what I understood about hash. I'm not a programmer. I'm just literally reading the white paper and understanding it with like zero knowledge of this. And what, um, basically what a hashtag is, what a hashtag, no, I'm sorry, what they, what they define as hash, it's just basically like this algorithm that is inside. And then what it, it does is that you get it to like miners, and this is where the proof of work, which we're gonna talk about it, where the proof of work is. And then this algorithm, I'm making an example, is two plus two, right? And then it's all hidden because it has a message. So the miners go, and then, you know, they work on it and they're like, oh, okay, two plus two, four. And then that's how they're able to basically mine the coin. Again, it's so much more complex than that, but that's basically how I understood how, you know, the process works, uh, you know, in a, in a basic way. Now, from here, this is basically uh, what um, Nakamoto says. The longest change not only serves as a proof of the sequence of event witnesses, but proof that it came from the largest pool of CPU power. As long as the majority of CPU power is controlled by nodes, when he says nodes, what I understood is just those miners, those people that say, I am an honest node, I'm going to do the transaction in, for my best interest because when I do this transaction, that's what the nodes are and that's what he's gonna call the honest nodes because what this transaction is going to do is going to give me a coin. So the beauty of Bitcoin basically is that these nodes or these people that are doing these transactions, they have a much higher interest of earning the coin than just not doing it, to put it away and doing fraud, which we're gonna explain right now in the white paper. So that's what the nodes he refers to those people that are, you know, um, basically validated in the transaction. So this is just basically like Wikipedia. Like everyone is just, you know, working together and, but obviously not so we could Wikipedia, but what I mean is like it's a community where people say, you know what, we don't need to use a bank anymore. Why don't we just create a community of peer to peers where we're basically just checking each other, making a block change, right? where you have a sequence and everyone has to have the same amount of information. So this basically is going to avoid doing fraud. And then we're gonna talk about privacy because it is a, um, it's actually included in the white paper. Now here, finally, um, he comes with the introduction. Now with the introduction, I'm not gonna read it all, I'm just gonna show you. Um, when you have a white paper or research paper and you have the introduction, Usually you're gonna have like a little bit of history of what's going on. And this is basically what the paper talks. He talks about, you know, what happens when you have someone in a banking industry that, you know, you give like $5 and someone steals the money. So then you have a third party involved and then there is mediation between, you know, this person and this person. So the system is inefficient. So Mr. Nakamoto says the following. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and read, and read you the main topic, you know, when you write papers in college, well, college and grad student, you know, in any, all the time, but obviously I'm always thinking of college, you have to have the, your thesis statement, and this is the thesis statement of the um, white paper from uh, Mr. Nakamoto, and let's read it. And it goes here, in this paper, we propose a solution to the double spending problem using a peer-to-peer -peer distributed time stamps, time stamp server to generate computational proof of the chronological order of transactions. <gasps> oh, okay. Finally, the system is secure as long as on its notes, remember those people that we talk about, collectively control more CPU power than any cooperating group of attackers notes. So this is the beauty of Bitcoin. And I'm going to get into that because then from here, he explains how the transactions go. And honestly, like he, well, again, I'm not a computer or a programmer person. So when I see this, I do feel overwhelmed and I'm like, what are they talking about? But if you see the system, it's just basically like a blockchain, right? This person verifies and, you know, and then you go A, B, C, D. And I'm not gonna go into the technicality of it because the white paper here already talks is about the general idea of transactions. Let's move on. 
Then it also talks about the timestamp servers. Again, a little bit of technical, but it's not. And then he talks about the proof of work. He basically just explains here that the proof of work, and this is basically how it says, proof of work. To implement a distributed timestamp server on a peer-to-peer -peer basis, we will need to use a proof of work system similar to Adam's back hash cache. I guess uh, this is one of the reference. So basically the proof of work, what it is, is like, you know, like if you have like a newspaper, right? Like a ledger and you will be like, oh, okay, I can validate that this transaction happened. And in general, I felt that that's what proof of work was. Basically you have to, and it says here, the proof of work also solve the problems of determining representation in majority decision making. Because um, again, very complex is <laughs> this, uh, and I'm trying to like, you know, putting as simple as I can in this white paper. But as you can see here, what Bitcoin relies on is just not even trust. It's a system that is so efficient that if we all do one, two, three, four, everyone wins. So I think that is the conclusion of why Bitcoin is so, uh, not so much Bitcoin, blockchain technology is so attractive. Now, finally, number f uh, step number five says network. And it says the steps to run the network as as follows. I'm not gonna read them all, but you can see here, he explains basically the, the, you know, the, the points. And when I say he, I'm talking that, you know, we're assuming that Nakamoto is a guy, but we don't know, he might be a woman too. No one has said that. <laughs> but supposedly no one knows who he is and it could be an organization, it could be, you know, I saw a picture online Obviously, I Google it and thousands of pictures came up, but I don't think so yet, unless I did not read it, we know who Nakamoto is. So if you know, please put it in the comment. <laughs> okay, from there we talk about, so, so far we understand that the white paper or what it does, it explains a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. But in general, what it's explaining is that we need the need of having a system where you cannot do double pay. That means that if you don't have the money, you can, it's basically trying not to defraud the system. And that's basically where the white paper of Bitcoin uh, relies on. Then from here, and look how beautiful this part here. Okay, so he talks about the payment verification and he you know, shows like a, like a little um, a diagram here how to do it. And notice that it's not too much. It's literally like nine papers. I thought it was gonna be like 40,000 papers, but Again, he's just here putting the general idea. Then he talks about privacy. And then from there, I love this part, he does the calculations of what are the odds of an attacker trying to generate an alternate chain faster than the honest chain. So the thing about Bitcoin is that because this is a peer-to-peer -peer system, the idea is to generate more people, more honest nuts. Remember, honest nuts are people basically that are just minding their own business. They're like, I just want to make Bitcoin, so I'm going to validate this transaction efficiently and accurately because that way, you know, I just keep making more money. So what he talks here about, and he does, um, I was, uh, he talks about the binomial random walk, and he does a little bit of math here to show that the probability, and then he says, we can, we can calculate the probability that the, the bad guy or the dishonest not, that he will ever reach break even or that the attacker even catch up with the honest change as follows. So basically what he explains is this. This chain, you have a lot of honest knots, right? And they're all like working, working, working. And then you have this attacker that he says, mm, I'm gonna start making my own blockchain to, you know, defraud. Well, the problem is that you have, because you have your P, which is the probability of an honest note to find the next block is higher, these people are motivated to make money than the one from the attack to do it, to basically, and then they explain the whole process of how he can cheat the system. And he explains it here, that it takes so much because the odds are against, you know, against him of doing a, a fake block change that, this attacker, again, because the system is not based by trust, but by efficiency, is more efficient by just being honest and just making money out of the coins and trying to basically attack the chain. And in the white paper, he explains here why. He shows the, the you know, probabilities. And we finally have the conclusion. And here we go. 
We have proposed a system for electronic transactions without relying on trust. We started with the usual framework of coins made from digital signatures, which provides a strong control of ownership, but it is incomplete without a way to prevent double spending. So here he's saying that, yes, we had the digital signatures, but the problem was that people could counterfeit the signatures and then you have the double spending problem. And this is what he says. To solve this, we propose a peer-to-peer -peer network using proof of work to record a public history of transactions that quickly becomes computationally impractical for an attacker to change if on its not control a majority of CPU power. So that means that in order for Bitcoin to be uh, safe or any cryptocurrency, you have to have more on its not. And by, by default, because humans should be rational, right? In economics, as we assume, there is much easier for them just to create the coins and just be honest and try to break the blockchain. Um, from here, he just basically also adds, it says, um, nodes can leave and rejoin the network at will, accepting the proof of work change as proof of what happened while they were gone. They vote with the CPU or power, expressing their accept acceptance of valid blocks by working on extending them and rejecting invalid blocks by refusing to work on them. Any needed rules and incentives can be enforced with consensus mechanisms. So this is the other thing about Bitcoin. You're trying to be decentralized, right? And try to give, uh, you know, the power to, um, I guess, more nodes, right? In order to make a decision. And obviously this helps tremendously because, you know, you don't have basically like a few hands with the power, which that's exactly what happens, what? In most, <laughs> in most governments, to put it that way. I hope you enjoy, let's um, just recap about uh, this incredible white paper. I hope you enjoy just a preview of what Bitcoin, how it started it. I can imagine when this guy or this person or this group just put publish and only if they knew that they were gonna just change the world forever. I think the value of Bitcoin comes from the blockchain technology. I feel that there's so much to learn, and I feel that in the next 10, 15 years, this is just basically going to be the new thing going on, right? We're going to be teaching kids how to, <laughs> how to do cryptocurrency and all that. So this is basically the main reason, too, what I wanted to do this podcast, because I have a five-year-old, and I'm going to start, you know, doing some coding with her. I am in zero. I have no idea of coding programming. I did take a C++ class once <laughs> for, as an elective, and I don't know what I was thinking because I should have just taken music or something easy, but I was like, oh, I can do it. Oh, it was just awful. I love programmers. I love you because seriously, it's like a job. You have to like sit down. And you're basically all the time having a relationship with a complete. This is all for today. Thank you so much for listening. We're going to be doing more cryptocurrency podcasts, the math behind Bitcoin and all that. And I'm going to be doing a financial analysis. We're going to go ahead and run all that data of maybe the last five years just to see the fluctuation of the prices, to see if we can find any deficiencies and just to have fun. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.